Roland Garros is postponed for the second straight year. See how the one-week delay has made waves on tour. Daniil Medvedev testing positive for COVID while in Monte Carlo. And quarantine, testing, and vaccine passports. Our hot take segment is unpacking one of the most controversial ideas coming out of the pandemic. The break starts now. Hey everyone, and welcome to The Break, your source for the most buzzworthy off-court news. You know me, I'm Erin Coscarelli. So on April 8th, Roland Garros decided to make an announcement, announcing a one-week postponement, meaning the event would now be held from May 24th to June 13th. Harmless enough, right? Well, not so much, because with a packed tournament schedule and the grass season immediately following Roland Garros, a seven-day delay creates more drama than you would think. Just watch Frenchwoman Alize Cornet's reaction to hearing the news. There was a report that came out today from L'Equipe that Roland Garros is going to be postponed one week. No, what, I didn't What's your know. reaction to that? Oh, God. Well, it stays between us, but our, our sport minister is a disaster. Sorry, I, I'm sorry, I have nothing against her, but... She only takes bad decisions for sport. It's like she doesn't care. It's a pretty selfish decision, to be honest, um, because the calendar is going to suffer from this uh, postponement. Daniil Medvedev also chiming in on the schedule change, saying, quote, It is ridiculous. It must be said. I'm not saying that in regards to the French Federation or the French government, but what is happening globally. The grass court tournaments impacted by the delay include the combined event in Hertogenbosch, ATP Stuttgart, and WTA Nottingham. Wimbledon, however, is still scheduled to begin on June 28th. So why the delay? Great question. FFT President Gilles Moreton said about the decision, quote, it will give the health situation more time to improve and should optimize our chances of welcoming spectators at Roland Garros. France, of course, currently in a four-week lockdown after a surge in COVID cases, the country expected to reopen in mid-May. Newly crowned world number two, Daniil Medvedev, looking to extend his lead over Rafael Nadal in Monte Carlo this week. However, after a positive COVID test forced him to withdraw, it looks unlikely he'll hold the second rank spot for very much longer. News broke that Medvedev tested positive for coronavirus while preparing for the Monte Carlo Masters on Tuesday. Daniil resides in Monaco, so was not really part of the tournament bubble as he was given the option to live at home during the event. Here's Daniil practicing with Rafael Nadal on the day he tested positive. So Rafa's next scheduled COVID test would come three days after contact with Daniil. No statement was given on any updated safety protocols following their practice. Daniil has been moved into isolation and was being treated by a tournament physician and the ATP medical team. Well, after the global pandemic wreaked havoc on tennis in 2020, the Pro Tours were tasked with a safe and efficient resumption in 2021. Tournament bubbles, hard quarantines, and vaccination booths have all been incorporated. However, one idea circulating in the sports world has left people a little divided. Should tournaments require vaccine passports for players and spectators? A vaccine passport is a credential that can be used to show a person has been vaccinated. And some say it's a great way to keep tournaments safe. However, others are claiming it discriminates against those who choose not to be vaccinated. Players' opinions on the vaccine, well, they are varying. Here's what Alina Svitolina had to say on the topic. Quote, for now, it makes almost like no sense to do something that has been tested for such a short period of time. I will probably wait for now. Irina Sabalenka was quoted in Miami saying she didn't trust the vaccine based on how quickly it was produced, but that if she had to receive it, she would. Novak Djokovic remains maybe the biggest name to express a little skepticism. Here's what Andy Roddick had to say last year about Novak's thoughts on the vaccination. The, the bottom line is it's not about whether or not he believes in vaccinations. It's what's safest to bring tennis back to the forefront 
on a global stage. And that is going to be with testing, that's gonna be with a vaccination. And just to clarify, Novak later stated that he was not against vaccines as a whole. He explained, quote, my issue here with vaccines is if someone is forcing me to put something in my body that I don't want. Players like Andy Murray, Naomi Osaka, Ash Barty, and Simona Halep have all supported the idea of COVID vaccinations. WTA Romania posted this image of Halep receiving the Pfizer vaccine back in February. Simona was quoted saying, I wanted to get vaccinated. I came with an open mind and I'm fine. I was vaccinated with Pfizer. I'm fine. I haven't had any side effects now. It's for everyone's sake and that's why I decided to get vaccinated. So we ask you folks at home, what are your thoughts? Is a vaccine passport maybe a good way to keep the sport safe? Or do you believe it's a step too far? Let us know below. And that'll do it for us this week. Of course, remember to use hashtag TheBreakTC to join in on the conversation. And of course, learn more about what your favorite players and personalities are doing off the court. Because, you know, there's more to tennis than just tennis. We'll see you next